to my channel, guys. Today, I have someone I have to interview. He's also a student. Or, oh, okay, I'm not quite sure, but I want to interview him so that he tells us um something about Germany. He's also in Germany. Okay, so you are welcome, my dear friend. Thank you so much, Rita. Okay, um, please, may we know your name and uh, where you are, you, you are coming from? Like, okay. your country. So, my name is Enes Apiakusi and um a Ghanaian citizen and currently I'm living in Germany. Okay, for how long have you been in Germany? Uh, I think I've been in Germany for almost like four years, yeah. Four years, okay, that's yeah. cool. Okay, so before we come to Germany, let's look at what you were doing in Ghana. What were you doing in Ghana before you came to Germany? Okay, uh, back in Ghana, I was a student. I studied uh, geography and rural development at uh, Kamen Kramer University of Science and Technology. And later on, I did my national service at Ghana Port and Harbors Authority. And later on, I also uh, took some professional experience at the Western Regional Coordinating Council as a community development officer. Okay, so how did you then come to Germany? Was it through school, yeah? Or yes, I came to Germany it? through school, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, did you have to block or you came through a scholarship? Um, To be honest, I came through a scholarship. So um, when I completed school, I was just like, I wanted to live out of the country. But uh, choosing Germany, I think it was uh, much more, I considered, you know, the lower cost of attendance as compared to other countries like the US and in Canada. So I was exploring opportunities on how to get a scholarship. And then I applied to many, but then the German uh, schools accepted me and gave me a scholarship. Oh, okay. And then which scholarship was that specifically? Um, the DAD, DAD EPOS scholarship. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so with this scholarship, can you walk, uh, walk us through the procedure on how to go about in order to get the scholarship. Is it that difficult? Because we want okay. to know. Uh, yeah, I think every scholarship is difficult. Scholarship is not a lottery, you know, like it's just like yeah. a process. You have to qualify before you uh, scholarship to study abroad. So um, for the DAD approved scholarship, it has a, a requirement. So you have to meet all the requirement before they can, you know, approve you to uh, study in Germany. So one of it is to, you know, uh, get a second class upper in your bachelor's or maybe a first class. You have to uh, get a two years professional working experience related to the program that you uh, apply for. And then you need to also submit your statement of purpose, your recommendation letter too. And uh, your CV, it has to be very extensive and comprehensive. You know, it has to match with uh, the program that you want to, you know, study. And uh, I think uh, if you get selected, they will interview you and then probably when you do a very good interview i think uh you you have a chance of you know getting a scholarship okay so um if i heard you correctly you have to get working experience related to the course you want to study is yes, that right that is, that is the requirement but sometimes they waive it if they see that probably maybe if the uh experience is maybe one year and you have another experience related to the program they can give it to you if your credentials are really valid and solid they can give you the scholarship. How about, um, for instance, I know in Ghana like this, we do national service for yep. like a year. So can you mm -hmm. use your national service as a working experience in order to get the scholarship? Um, I think or normally it, depend? it, depends, it yeah. depends on the department and you know the application in, in, in particular. Okay. Because sometimes you know you, you can have you know one year experience after your service, but then they also count your national service as a, as an experience, even though you were not really employed, but it's an experience also. And then holistically, if they see that your application is very solid, maybe you have a first class in your uh in your degree, and then you have your, your CV is good, your courses that you took, you had a very good grades, and probably maybe if you have uh, two years of working experience, I think uh, you are good to go. They can just win it for you. Yeah, so national service, it can count, I, I can say, yeah. Oh, okay, that's nice. Yeah. That's not because I know most of um most of my friends, like people call me and tell ask me about um having a national service certificate, if that will be valid for um the scholarship in particular. That's why I'm asking the question. Yes, yes, you, you can I think you can you can do that if your uh maybe your supervisor is willing to give you a recommendation and then probably maybe um uh, 
an employment certificate or confirmation of employment. And then for if, if he can state specifically that maybe you were able to you know achieve this kind of experience from this time to this time, and then the number of hours that you work there, if it mounts up to a, a year, and then I think you can include your national service and any other experience that mounts to a year to make it two years and then you can apply. Yeah, it's possible. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so yeah. finally you had you had to go through this procedure and then mm -hmm. how was it like you had to post it to the school, right? Yes. Yes. And then so, uh, mm -hmm. every every school has its own way of applying. So for my school, uh Colonial University of Applied Sciences. I they specifically they stated that you need to apply online and then you send the document to them through email. So they have an email that you have to send your applications. So you do uh just like you compile everything, your recommendation letter into one file, everything into one file, and then you send to a specific email. So they are going to review, and then if they finish reviewing and then you qualify, they will schedule an interview. That is the next process after applying. Okay, there is even an interview. Okay, so you yes. have to you have to also pass this interview, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, because, yes, because the first step is to apply, and then you get shortlisted, and then after shortlisting, you will conduct an interview. So you have to even pass the interview before they uh, submit your document to DAD. That DAD will do the final, you know, processing to give you the scholarship. Okay, so finally, when you had the scholarship, how was the feeling? I was, you know, very good, you know, as a Ghanaian, an African, you know, getting a scholarship to study abroad. I think every, I know, everyone right? would be happy about it. <laughs> so um, when you had to come to Germany for, you, you, you finally had the scholarship and then you went for your visa. So did you know someone in um, Germany and how was the um, yes, process yes, like yes, when yes. you were entering the country? Uh, um, actually, I knew someone here. I had one friend over here. He he lives in Bremen. So, um, but then he he's a worker. He's not a student. He came here as a student when he was a child, but then currently he's a worker. So, um, yes, actually, um, when you get a scholarship, normally uh, it depends on the school. For my school, uh, they assigned one person to me. All right. Uh, so the person was just like my steady buddy. And then the person came to meet me at the airport, you know, take me through the school processes and every time. And then, yeah, that is how the process was. So it was not really uh, tedious. It was just simple and easy because, you know, they assign you to a person here and then the person helps you with everything. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. All right. So um, your master program. Mm -hmm. Was it? Are you currently in school, or you have completed? Are you still a student, or you've completed? No, no I'm not. I'm not a student. I'm not a student. I have okay. You are done. All right. Okay. So was your master a program two years, or was it less than two years? Uh, it's a two year program. Okay. So within these two years, were you your school in particular? Were you restricted to study within that two years, or you had to extend it? Because I know in Germany, um, it's not compulsory for you to finish your master degree in the stipulated period when okay. you block your account? Is it the same for um, the DAD students? Um, I think with the DAD students, uh, it depends. It depends on uh, the situation that will make you extend. Okay. Uh, probably if it's about a, a research issue because people need to you know, travel outside Germany to conduct their research. So probably if you have some kind of visa issues or maybe, uh, you are just doing a research outside and you have a problem with meeting up with uh, you know, uh, the people that maybe you are going to interview or gather the day, they can about you wanting to delay, then definitely uh, DAD is not going to accept. Yes. So you need to finish within your two-year program because the contract is a two years. They have to give you a scholarship within the two years. So anything after, it has to be an educational reason and not any other reason. It, has, it should not be your personal reason. It should be something related to your studies. That is why they, maybe they, they want to extend. But then if probably you say uh, you, you, you were not able to finish the program because of maybe like you traveled for your personal reasons, that is why maybe you defer the program. No, they will not extend. But if you have a problem with your research, traveling outside, something like that, they can 
you know, pardon you and then extend it for maybe a semester or two to make it three okay. years. Okay, so in that case, you'll be given the stipend, yeah? Of course, yeah, they can, okay. yeah. Okay, okay. And yeah. how much is the stipend every month? Uh, I think for our time, it, it was like 850 euros. 850. But uh, I think, yes, 850 euros. But uh, now I think it's like 900 and something. They've increased it. Yeah, for, for those who came uh, last year and then this year, they are going to receive 900 and think something. I don't know of the exact amount, but I think it's oh, more okay. than 900. Yeah. Yes, but um, I have this question. So this nine hundred, um, your your rent and everything is included is in this nine hundred. Your insurance, right? Yes, yes. No, no, no. Uh, DAD, DAD will pay your insurance, and then the nine hundred or eight hundred and fifty, when they give you, you have to pay your own uh, accommodation, and any other expenses. So the only thing that is not included is the uh, what do you call it the the insurance DAD is going to take care of the insurance, but the H C that they are going to give you, you have to pay for your own accommodation and then your food. Okay, okay. So this let's come to this mm -hmm. insurance. I want to know more about the insurance. Do they put you yeah. guys on the public health insurance, the statutory health insurance, or they put you on a private health insurance? Um, I think with the DAD they put you on a private insurance. They have uh. I think a collaboration with Continental, I think uh, one insurance like that in Germany, they have a contract with them. So every scholar is on that uh, insurance. But if you want to move to um, the government, then DAD has a, a, a premium that they are going to pay. And then you, I think you pay the rest because they have a, a specific amount that they, they give to every uh, scholar. So if you want to go to maybe, if you want to move from uh, the insurance that DAD put you on, to another insurance, then you have to, you know, pay for the additional costs. DAD is not going to pay. You have to pay for your own insurance mm. if you, yeah, that is that is how I it. get it. But in, in this case, because I know most insurance, private insurance companies, yeah, when you kind of go to the hospital and um, uh, you show your contract, I mean, to the receptionist, when yeah. you are being treated, after you are being treated, you are mm. being given the bill, Yep. And then you send it to the insurance company. Yep. And then sometimes, sometimes they will tell you that, okay, you have to pay like 30% of the bill or 20% of the bill. Is it the same as the continental insurance? Yes, I think uh, from experience, for me, I, 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 I never went to, you know, like a hospital when I was on the DAD scholarship. So, uh, but from, from uh, experience from other people, when they go to uh, hospitals, and then they give them the, the bill, they send it to DAD. And then DAD will refund it to the students. Oh, okay. Then they will then pay to the... Um, yes. Uh, no, oh. I think no, they, they, will, they will first pay. They will mm -hmm. pay for the insurance and then get a receipt, everything. And then they send it back to DAD. Okay. And then DAD will refund it back to the student. Okay, but in this case, okay, since you said you you didn't get um yeah I didn't I did I, I, I didn't sick. Get, okay because yeah. I know for some insurance company they will not then refund the full amount to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe uh -huh, you'll be asked some some um some the the health insurance doesn't cover some of the sicknesses so yeah, sickness. yeah. yeah exactly so they will then tell you to um pay like a percentage like 20% or 10%. So that's what I wanted to know if it's the same as the continental insurance. No, I think they, they pay everything. They pay everything. Okay, then yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Because I yeah. think it, for the DAD scholarship, it's a special, uh, you know, insurance, sorry, it's a special insurance for scholars in Germany. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's, it's different. I think the premium is kind of different from the other private. It's not a full private. It's more like, you know, some, I don't know, so it's a special package. It's, it's a special. It's, it's different from the, the, from the normal yeah. private insurance. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes, that is how it is. Yeah. Mm. And then for you guys, are you um supposed to work? Are you allowed to work more than um the 20 hours a week? Or are you supposed to work just for 520 euros a month? Uh, I think uh, with the DAD scholars, Normally, you are not supposed to work. Really? You are supposed to, yes. Normally, like the, you are not supposed to work. Mm -hmm. 
but sometimes when you get uh, a work and then you want to you know work you need authorization from the DAD before you enter into any kind of employment in Germany and then okay. it has to be related to your studies mm -hmm. yes so DAD when you get a job DAD will review the contract everything and then also it has a, a an income cap it should not exceed 450 during our time so okay, but now, now it has been increased to 520 yeah. euros. Yeah. yeah, so now I think, uh, speaking for now, I think it should not ex exceed 520. So when it exceeds, what DAD will do is they will subtract that uh, surplus from your monthly stipends. Wow. So if you yeah. work like, if you work like um, 800 euros a month, then mm -hmm. they will, um, 800 minus for, uh, 520 for, will be 520. like... Uh, ah, okay, like it will be like 280. Right? So yes, they will deduct they will, they will this deduct 280. From your scholarship. So they are not going to give you, as at now that they are taking more than 900, they are not going to give you 900. So they will deduct 280 from the 900 that uh, they normally pay. Yeah. Then I think it's better you just do the 520 for a month. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so apart from so deducting. It's going to be like a mini, a mini job. A mini or something job. Like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, from you still need authorization from the DAD. From DAD, so, all right. Yeah, yeah. But apart from this authorization, uh, or apart from the deduction, sorry, apart from the deduction, would you not be penalized mm -hmm. for working or over, like getting in a surplus, like more money by the immigration office, like the Auslander Behörde or something? Yeah, that is to be a problem because one, you got authorization from the, the DAD. And then the Auslander too has its own rules. The Auslander's rule, yeah, you don't need to work more than 20 hours. So the rules for DAD and Auslander is different. Okay. But then the Auslander, if you work more than 20 hours, that is when maybe they can penalize you. But, you know, sometimes they just, you know, it's normal. Now it's normal. People work more than 20 hours. It's mm. just normal. But for the DAD, you, you, you cannot work more than... You, if you work more than 20 hours or probably maybe for any employment, they have to review your, the contract. So if the contract... Because they know that it will you know, affect your, the progress of your studies. And then they are, they are not going to approve, approve your authorization to work. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. 